What we're going to be talking about to close out today's session is delivering smart buildings successfully. We've got a great panel who've been involved in some really high-tech buildings and we've all been on different projects and we've all seen similar issues and we decided to bring this panel together and just have a, a good informal chat around how to make sure we deliver smart buildings successfully. So, first up, what is a smart building? We're gonna, gonna throw that one to James first and then we'll have a good chat around what it is and we'll move through some of the other topics we've got on, uh, on the list. Okay, um, I'm gonna try and keep this simple, but uh, for me, a smart building uh, is a building that's making use of technology, um, the best use of technology, to uh, produce a sustainable building which promotes well-being, uh, productivity, and um, also a great end user experience. Um, I think also, you know, hopefully it's going to give a rapid return of investment and a greater value in the asset for the client as well. And um, I think the real smart bit for me, being from uh, a BIM background, is that, you know, that's intertwined with the BIM process. Um, you know, we've got a rich lexicon of it, information via BIM. Make sure that's intertwined to an, enable the digital twin. Fantastic. So, Evo, do you want to expand on that? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. It's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's been asked around industry for the last 25 years, I believe. Um, but kind of from my perspective, it's all about the end user, who the user is. So whether that's the tenant in an office, whether that's the landlord or the management, um, or the asset owner, it's building the, the journey with them of what smart could look for them. Um, it's a very much a unique and dynamic solution at the end. So I avoid any potential one-line explanations of what a smart building is, because not, not every building is exactly the same. It just depends on what the user specifically needs, and it's all about that journey getting from A to Z. Brilliant. And Esther, we've thrown you in right at the deep end at the last minute. So any thoughts on, on what a smart building is? Yeah, I'm, I'm the great gate crash panelist here. So, um, yeah, I suppose uh, just because of the previous presentation I gave on healthy buildings, obviously, I would say that a smart building is also a healthy one. But also just to add to the, to the other definitions, I think also a smart building is an adaptable one. So because we're looking at, and I, I want to sort of throw in circularity into this picture a bit, that a, a building that can adapt to, to different users. So we talked about the end user journey, but during the lifetime of a building, there might be a different set of end users and then the building ought to be able to adapt to that because that's where really need, we need to be going towards, you know, in terms of making the country net zero is to try to, try to make use of our existing stock, try to make our buildings better uh, used for uh, for future generations, essentially. So it's, but basically everything else has been said before as well. Brilliant, thank you, Anna. Uh, as much as I'm stood over here and part of the panel as well, it's got quite an informal one. But for me, smart buildings are very much a building that generates data. Uh, previous buildings, they, they they generated output, heating, light, waste. But some of these buildings are starting to create a lot of data, and what we do with that data how we use it, how we turn it into things we can work with, that's where we start making our, our smart buildings really, really valuable. I'll not dwell on it too much because we've only got 20 minutes and a limited supply of beer. So the, the big question, and I'll, I'll let whoever wants to jump in on this one first, of why does the market want a smart building? I'm happy to jump in on that. Um, I'll throw a question back at you, why not? Uh, the, the, the benefits from, as, as the word comes benefit, are endless. Um, I, I, I always kind of go back of splitting the benefit in terms of who the end benefactor is. So from an end user perspective, as you said, it could be various end users throughout the life cycle. What is the value for them? So from an end user, um, user experience, if it's a visitor, uh, coming into an exhibition hall like this, what is their experience? We need to understand that and then relate back to what we implement and how we implement it. Um, and then from the landlords or management perspective is that, as you mentioned, the insight, the data, the analytics that we can acquire, capturing that information is not enough alone. We need to ensure that we learn from the data that we acquire and introduce the kind of the feedback, the circular approach to it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my benefit on it. Fantastic, and I think uh, 
I'll, I'll not go last every time and have the final word and everything, so I'll try and, try and jump in. But for me, what we're discussing with our customers, it, it's such a broad range. Some of them want a smart building because they want a really advanced user experience for people visiting the building. Some really want to control that building. There's so, so much you can do with a smart building that it's, it's, it's setting off the, the light bulbs for clients and asset owners. They're seeing a world of opportunity that wasn't there before. So I think it's a really exciting time for the market. Um, I just wanted to add to that also. I think there's, there's the sort of the other side of this is that I wonder whether people where clients do want smart buildings or they just want to know what their building is doing. So some of it is some of it is the kind of performance gap that we've been talking about for as long as I know, and I'm sure you know I hear I talk to engineers who've been around since the 70s and since you know they started talking about the the performance gap. So a lot of it is that a lot of our end clients get a product that product that they're not happy with. So it's the user experience is not right. So they want a superior user experience. Some others want to. Um, maximize energy performance. Some of them want to maximize adaptability and they're not getting it. So smart buildings is a way to start to measure that performance of the building from whatever perspective you want to, to then be able to hopefully actually improve that. Great, and James, what, what are your customers telling you? Um, well, you know, we've seen on many tenders recently that they want a smart building. You know, that's to be defined. Uh, but, you know, I think about it quite simply about, you know, the kind of benefits and the, the, the delight I get from, you know, putting all smart devices around our home. We're all doing it, aren't we? You know, we're getting a better experience from our own homes. Why wouldn't you want that in a larger building where the gains are much bigger? You know, where I think about, you know, where I'm increasing my well-being, my efficiency around my house. Quite sad, I know. But if you take that experience and then take, apply it to a hospital where you can improve efficiency, improve well-being, make it a better place to be, why, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Fantastic. I think everyone agrees. Why wouldn't you want a smart building? It's a great idea. But what support do we need to design and deliver smart buildings? How, how do we make these a reality? I'm going to go to you, James. Okay, well, I think there's quite a few people along the way that need to be involved. Um, you know, from uh, you've, got, you've got obviously your state managers, your design managers. There's new roles that have been identified, like uh, master systems integrators. Uh, as I say, that it's, it's very much entwined, intertwined with the BIM process. So BIM people, you know, I'm a BIM person by background, but not just the contractor. You need information managers on the client side as well. So there's many, many, many people that need to be a part of it on the journey to make it happen. I think, effectively. Great, and Evo. Um, uh, um. I would say at early stages, you want to engage as many stakeholders as possible because everyone's opinion matters in that kind of journey to smart. So capturing those early ideas and all the way through the process is absolutely crucial uh, to get to the end product of what we call a, a smart building. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that the, the, the organization and kind of collaboration between various parties couldn't, couldn't stress it out enough. Uh, and, and if you want a, a smart, healthy building, is the, are the new roles, are the new people we need to be involving? Yes, I mean, I think it's the same. The, the idea here is the same as with everything that we do in construction that doesn't have a set framework and set ways of doing things. So I find that, that the smart buildings process, you, you hear the same things as what we heard about sustainability. Let's do it early. Let's incorporate the whole thing very early. And it's not because it's, you know, we are the special snowflakes and we want a lot of attention, but it's because we've not done it before. There isn't a standard way of doing it. So you actually have to think hard about what you're doing. You have to invent the process as you go along. And time and again, of course, you come at stage four or five or whatever, and then, and then you tell afterwards, I told you so. But at the same time, you know, we keep saying the same things to people that you need to think about how you design this. So you think about not the details of design and where you put things, but how you design that process of how you engage, how you engage people. So I think that then that applies to the to the health part of it. It just adds another dimension. But the process, the, the the idea is the same that you have to develop the process of design. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that um, as we get into this quite quickly, that the um, uh, the case studies are going to prove the case quickly because it is addressing the performance gap, isn't it? So you are going to get that measurement, that benchmark 
and it's going to pull people with it and they're going to see that they're going to need to you know make more investments investment and think about totex rather than just you know capex and, you know think about the whole picture to make it happen yeah. yeah i think that's a really interesting angle because if you start early and you involve the specialists you might not make some of these mistakes um there was a building that I, I, was, I wasn't involved in, but I, I, I was told about by a friend. It was designed as, a, as an A-rated building. When it, they started using it, it was run as, as a D. And they just hadn't modelled the laptops being plugged in when it was a school of computing. It was full of computers. So this kind of methodology of looking at it earlier, thinking about the whole building as a smart entity, can get rid of some of these mistakes as well as really add to that user experience and get people into, in, into a mindset where buildings are better, more responsive, and provide a better user experience. So million dollar question, what are the anticipated end user benefits of a, of a smart building? I'll let you have that one first, Ivo. It's another million dollar question. Um, it is difficult to answer it in one single liner, um, but the the benefit is going to be divided by, as, as I feel like I've been banging on about for the last 10 minutes, is who are the users and what are the benefits to each of those users. So in, in terms of if you're sustainability conscious, who looks after the sustainability and you're able to relate those benefits to them. Same for energy perspective or user experience, who's going to benefit from that and what are the values that they need, what, what helps their user journey throughout it. Uh, so we'll say to extract the benefits without me listing them is to understand the journey of each and every single individual that might come into the contact with a building at day one, day two, and day three, as you said, in 20, 20 years down the line. i just add to that that I think some of the, some of the benefits only also manifest at a different stage of the building's life. So when we talk about us, professionals in the built environment, we when we talk about smart buildings, it's an enabler. So all we do is create a, f a framework for then clients or building operators to then make use of that. Because this is where also, you know, a lot of, uh, again, just taking sustain uh, parallels with sustainability, is you put a number of features into the building, and, but you're not responsible for people not using them later on. Because unfortunately, as much as you'd love to, sh to go and shake the client, as to please make use of this great thing that I've just done, you can't do it. So I think, there is obviously a, the, part, the point about trying to make the transition from design and construction teams to an owner, occupier, or a tenant more seamless so that there is that kind of follow through. But we, we as designers and constructors fundamentally create a framework that needs to be used. So it's, it's ultimately the benefit needs to be realized by the, by the client, the tenant, the, the building occupier, or the landlord. And in parallel to what we do, they also need to develop their understanding and perhaps their whole drive towards net zero and some other initiatives are driving and helping those clients to actually make this a priority for themselves as well. Brilliant. So one of the things we found really beneficial on some of the projects we've been doing is um, a smart buildings opportunities matrix where we spoke to all of the people who were going to use the building at different departments and we went through all of the ideas from the great ideas to the wacky ideas and we captured them all, we prioritized them all. Which ones of these are gonna provide real benefit to you? And then the ones, we dismissed some of the wacky ones. Cutlery tracking was one of them, that was, a, that was a bit wacky. But the others, can we get the information? Can we provide the value? Can we get, the, um, get applications to support what you wanna do? And our list came down to things that really, really mattered. So James, benefits? Okay, well, I'm going to keep it quite light. I think, you know, we want to delight people. You know, we want people to fall in love with the buildings that they live and work in. And um, I think my smart buildings can massively enable that. Fantastic, great answer. So, now we're going to talk about the considerations for planning a smart building, because I think that's why we wanted to do this session, around how we make sure the different stages of that planner works involve that smart process to make sure we, we we get it right and make sure we deliver the smart building that way we want it to deliver from the outset so I'll, I'll, maybe i'll start with you james on that one yeah so um we work with uh, some customers uh who want to have a smart building um and it's quite you know it's, it's in its early stages isn't there so there's not really a framework around which to deliver a smart building so 
we've considered that smart um, journey over the Reaper Plan of Works and identified some uh, you know, key decisions uh, that, and actions that need to happen over those different stages. So some of them, for example, you know, first of all, you know, um, at a very early stage, decide whether you know, you've got any finance to enable this. You know, what are your you know, outline user journeys that you want to enable along the path? And, and then sort of build that journey up as you go through the Reba plan, like you do with any kind of design progression anyway. So yeah, kind of matching it to that uh, workflow. I think it's something that a lot of people in the industry can get hold of. Great. That's that? Um, I think that it's, it's always, it always is helpful um, to know who the end user is going to be, but especially in the context of the London office market, that's not necessarily typical. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of speculative, speculative buildings, and I think that's a, that's a much more difficult, um, difficult situation with smart buildings to try to, to, try to, to anticipate what, what clients might want. Um, but, it's, but in terms of, in terms of um, you know, how you can make the process easier, it's, it's, it's essentially, it's, it's very similar to a lot of other specialist considerations as to, is to have a client that actually believes in it, whether it's a speculative developer or an end user, uh, and also a very good team uh, of, of other general uh, construction industry professionals like quantity surveyors and project manager, I think is absolutely key to it. To know how to coordinate the different disciplines, because I find that a, a great project manager during the design and construction process who understands what this requires can make an, uh, a world of difference in terms of whether this succeeds or not. Sorry. Brilliant. And Eva, what tools do we have to, to help those project managers to, to deliver? Uh, I would say just going back in terms of the stages as we go through it, um, you know, we, we, we've got what we call, let's say, a done building or initially it's, it's not smart, although it's arguable that you could say it's just a lower degree of intelligence smart. And then all of a sudden we want a smart building. Well, what's the gap that fills that? And as, as all of you guys have discussed and mentioned now, it's that staged approach so we can both quantify, qualify and cost it in terms of how much, how much resource and effort we need to put on each stage and a clear journey and a life cycle from that point A to Z or from one to seven, uh, as according to Reba. Fantastic. So it, it's not a launch event. It's not something that we're, we're here to talk too much about, but we, we are behind closed doors working on a bit of an overlay for the plan of work to, to discuss how we bring smart into that process but we're, we're, we'll, we'll certainly be sharing more of that with, with, with people as time goes on. So finally before, before we run out of time and uh, we all head over and have a chat after, after our little chat, have you got any case studies, buildings that you, you can share with us that are, are showing exemplary work in this area or picking off some of these challenges? Eva? Uh, not um, I, I'll gen generalize it a bit, um, not to name drop any clients as such, uh, but there's plenty uh, all around, mostly around North America and UK. Um, some of the, there's, there's both good examples and bad examples. Um, just starting with the, the bad news, as you would say, um, there's plenty, worked on plenty of projects where, or been aware of plenty of projects where the, the relevant stages have not been implemented or the vision's not been uh, addressed early on or the stakeholders not been willing to engage uh, and you just end up with a plug and play solution but it's not a plug and play solution from a smart buildings perspective uh, but then the opposite side of the spectrum if you go through all those stages and clients very willing to engage and they see the vision and the strategy that you put in place um, there's some great examples out there um, some Google buildings, Google it. Fantastic. James? Um, I think we've um, done some discrete smart things um, along the way. Um, some of our secure projects have very integrated BMS systems, but you know, I can't name the project particularly, um, but we can see that it's definitely coming our way. And that's part of the reason for you know, joining you guys and getting into a discussion so we're better prepared. We understand what we need to do at each stage to enable that because it's hugely exciting, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Esther? Uh. Um, I was just going to say, it seems like there's a similar pattern that all these uh, clients who want to build smart buildings also don't want to talk about it. 
Um, I think we're all under NDAs, um, essentially. But yeah, it's a similar experience for me from a sort of healthy buildings perspective as well, is that I've, I've been involved in, 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 in a project, a large office one, where it, sort of, it started with a, a smart building strategy. So it started with, with reporting, essentially, write, writing reports, engaging with the, with the end user groups, various end user groups, kind of what you, you described to come up with what your brief is. Essentially, you write your own brief and then start working out what it is that you want to do because there is no definition of what a smart building is. So it's, it's a bespoke creation, essentially. And I just hope that there will be clients out there who actually want to showcase this a little bit because, because I think we still talk quite a lot about the edge building in Amsterdam and, and those sorts of examples. And, and I think it's time that we started talking about some publicly available examples in London because we know that they are around. It's just who wants to, who, who has the, the courage really as a client to want to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're in a similar position. We're working on a number of these buildings, but we're not really at liberty to discuss the details. But there's a few reasons behind that. Going on such an innovative journey includes risk it might not all work and if it does all work they don't want their competitors to know exactly what they're doing and do the same they want to have the best building so this is a really interesting area of ip as well as a really interesting area of uh, new building technologies and we're we're all going to hang around we're going to have a have a chat so please do come and have a talk with us but you'll have to excuse us not talking too openly about our case studies at, at the moment so that's uh, that's all of our time that's all, all we had time to talk uh, about smart buildings but i'm not going anywhere i'm sure the team aren't going anywhere so please do hang around and have a chat thanks everyone okay. thanks <laughs>